Hey there, it's Matt. Today we're going to be looking at the 110 scale Iron Studios Battle Diorama Scale Thanos from Avengers Infinity War. Let's get into it. You know, even though these are smaller scale statues, you still get advanced features like full color boxes with custom art on the front, back, and sides. For the front, you've got a rendition of Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet. For me, this harkens back to the original artwork from the Infinity Saga from Marvel Comics. I really dig it. It looks, it's unique without being too wild. On the sides, you've got the six Infinity Stones. On the back, you've got a photograph, full height, full size of the statue itself. On the top, you've got the Infinity War logo. Very nice. I like it a lot. I don't really display art boxes. I just don't have room to. But if you're one that does, this is a nice call. This is the base plate. This is actually, oh, of course, the base of all your display options, of which there are four. And I'll show you those in just a minute. Now in here, we've got Thanos' rock bases. One of the neat things you can do is, as I said, you can display this statue in four different ways. He's got his rock base that you could put on flat ground just like that with no base. You can put this piece on the black base and have that as an option. So that's two. Then you can have this rock stand here. And that, this one goes on top, keys into the top. That's your third option. And then you can put the whole thing on the base. And this is your fourth option. You can use these options to change Thanos' height in your display. Maybe it uh, is something that you need for additional clearance in a detail for something like that. I'll probably always display it in this full size one because this Thanos is actually from my favorite scenes when movie. Thanos is pulling the moon down using the Infinity Gauntlet and he throws it at Tony Stark. I, I just love that scene. It actually breeds one of the best lines in the whole series when Tony comes and lands after he's been hit and says, if you throw another moon at me, I'm gonna lose it. I just love it. I died in the theater and I, I crack a big old smile every time I hear it on the Blu-ray. All right, once you've got your base put together, you can then put in your meteor strikes, these flaming pieces of debris that come down from when the moon is pulled down. These are all key. Nice thing about these pieces, they're actually made of uh, I believe it's a PVC, so they're a little bit flexible. I was worried if these were going to be clear cast resin, that they would actually break and be really fragile. But uh, Iron Studios has actually addressed that and used this flexible polyvinyl of some kind. It's clear, it's very nicely painted, it's no bubbles or anything, it's a very high quality piece. Each one is keyed to go into the base. That one goes right there. This smaller one goes right here. It's a little tricky because it's pointing more down than this one. You kind of naturally want them all to go the same way, but they're not. It took me a couple tries to get that in the first time I did it. And then if you turn the base around, you'll see that this one goes right in here. It's a little tricky because it's a pin and a key. Turn that base back around. And there you go. Now Thanos himself is right in the center of the box. It's a really nice piece. I like the way he's done up. His skin shade is a little more pale gray than I would have probably done if I'd painted it myself. I maybe would have hit him with a little bit more pinkish purple, but that's, you know, personal preference. This is what the licensors agreed to, and that's what he came out as. I do like it. He reads as Thanos, no problem at all. He's got nice texturing in his tunic and in his pants. He keys into the base with a pin, a key, and magnets. So he's very secure. One thing to be aware of when you're dealing with this piece, try not to move it around too much on this black base because the finish will scratch. I've got a couple little marks on there. They're not that big a deal because they are under the base, but if you're worried about things like that, really be aware of it. One more feature that this has is his Infinity Gauntlet does light up. Iron Studios uses a unique system to do that. They've got a hole in the main arm here, and in that hole you place a flashlight. The flashlight comes with batteries, 
it's not the highest quality piece. I'm actually going to try and find a flashlight that's a little bit better, that fits in this hole, that will then shine through some piping in here and light these infinity stones. You can see the flashlight, it has little hearts around it, which is, I think, hilarious. It's a retail piece off the shelf that they found that worked for these purposes, so I'm sure I'll be able to find something. It does not work very well. It's hard to get the batteries to make a good connection. It doesn't, it, it's just cantankerous. It doesn't work well at all. So getting these to light up is a trick. Once you get it, if you get it, good luck. So this is the only gripe I have with this statue, this flashlight system. Actually, let me say this. The flashlight system, I think, is very clever. The flashlight itself is extremely poor quality. That does fit in there, slot in there. It's got a magnet or something that pushes it back so you don't lose it in there. Wouldn't be that big a deal because you pour it out that way. Now this version, this is not lighting up for me, so I won't be able to show you that feature in real time. But there you go. Once you get this flashlight in there, you stick it in there, and the, the Infinity Gauntlet will light up. Under these studio lights, it wouldn't show up anyway. And that's all there is in the box. My impressions of this piece overall are pretty high. I've been eyeing this Battle Scale Diorama series by Iron Studios for quite some time because, frankly, I'm running out of display space, but I still want to collect new characters. These 110 scale characters are impressive in their detail, their finish, their solid cast resin, I do believe the large base down here is hollow cast, but everything else feels completely solid cast. I'm really impressed with the paint application. Thanos has uh, speckling and flesh tone variations in his skin paint up. His tunic has shading on both the blue part here and the green part here. The meteor strikes are well shaded. There's dry brushing, there's air brushing, there's washes. It's just a very nicely done piece. His boots have mud on them. Sometimes you'll see some line bleeding along things like this, features like this, even on the, some of the larger quarter scales. You'll be able to see where the sculpt goes through a gutter and it goes from a vertical to a horizontal and there'll be a lot of color bleed between those two. They've done a great job with this small scale in getting rid of that. Very impressed overall. I think it displays very well. This would be a nice piece to have at work, uh, maybe upstairs, uh, not in your main collection room because it's not too obtrusive. Iron Studios does make a quarter scale Thanos as well and I believe he's 26, maybe 30 inches tall. He's huge. Uh, because Thanos is larger than a normal humanoid organism of this type. Um, let me show you a couple scale comparisons. Here we have Tony Stark from Iron Man 3. This is a this is a 1/6 scale 12 inch figure. You can see that he is oh just about an inch and a half, two inches shorter than the full height of this Thanos. Thanos here is listed at 13.7 inches tall so that gives you a good idea how he would fit in a lineup there here's another guy standing on a rock we have Sabretooth quarter scale you can see how much bigger he is but for a what this is a one-tenth scale statue and you can see it holds up in size and I think value to these. He's $159. Thanos is $159. He's available on Sideshow still. And I think he'd be a great centerpiece to uh, Infinity War display, especially of these battle diorama scale, art scale characters. You've got Iron Man you can get, you can get Black Panther, you can get Captain America, Black Widow, Iron Spider. Um, and I think I'll be getting a few of those. My final thoughts for this piece it's something that I'm glad I have. It's something that will probably start my collection uh, in these 110 scales. And I'm sure I'll add at least two or three more pieces. Even if it's just Iron Man, that would make a great set for a bookshelf. Iron Studios is a Brazilian company. They've done a lot of really cool stuff lately. They've got the really big Endgame statues coming out and they're gonna be worth a look. Overall, very pleased. I recommend picking one up.
for $159, you really can't go wrong. Hey, did you like that video? Be sure to subscribe by clicking the S icon on your screen and click that bell icon to be notified whenever a new video is posted. If you'd like more info on the items featured in this video, click the link provided under Product Info. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to let your geek side show.